Yo, welcome to the Vonnie Podcast, the podcast making you invulnerable to coercion. I'm Shane and... I'm Jason. <laughs> so this podcast is covered by a BIPCOT no government license, allows reuse and modification to anyone except for governments and the agents thereof. Uh, so yeah, we're going to uh, conclude this long, seemingly never-ending Crypto Anarchy series today. But first, Jason, man, uh, <laughs> welcome back. It's It's been a while. I was thinking uh, before the show, and um, yeah, I, I, I guess it had been... Um, it had been March, uh, or not March, um, probably like uh, some t- sometime this summer, uh, in the uh, midsummer, uh, when we recorded last. But we never released, or I, I guess I never released the episode. I forgot about it actually. So um, it's yeah, I guess it's been uh, it's been even longer since uh, since the listen uh, since most of my listeners have uh, have heard from you. So uh, how how have things been going? Uh, what's new? Uh, on personal, nothing really is new, but. Uh... I did. I did. Old dog learning new tricks. Um, I learned um, uh, purse.io. I don't know if you, you know about that one. It's uh, Amazon. It's it's a, a point Amazon and Bitcoin, so you can use Bitcoin to buy things off Amazon and get a discount for doing so. Mm-hmm. So that was that was kind of cool. And finally got a crypto wallet. As the older listeners will know, I am not a techie kind of guy. <laughs> um, give me a, 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 fi- a firearm and a knife and leave me in the woods and I'll be okay. But put a computer in front of me and I freeze a little bit. Right. So, but yeah, uh, this past like three weeks, I, I, I learned Bitcoin. I got a crypto wallet. I learned purse.io and now I'm hooked. Right on. Yeah. I'm, I'm, now, a, I'm now a Bitcoin guy. <laughs> That's awesome to hear, man. That's <laughs> awesome to hear. Um, and uh, I, I mean, I know we talked, we, we we talked about it before, and um, you kind of, I mean, I, I had the same reaction to it initially too. It's like, I, you know, I'll maybe I'll learn it eventually, um, but you know, it's kind of, uh, uh, it's it's kind of daunting, right? But user friendliness, it wasn't too bad for you. Uh, no, no. Um, it was it was surprisingly, almost embarrassingly easy to 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 learn Samurai Wallet to learn purse.io and then like to learn how to transfer bitcoin between float and, and my samurai wallet it was like just a regular it was it was easier it was literally easier than doing like a regular bank transfer or any sort of like online purchases it was and i'm i'm up i'm kind of embarrassed that it took me this long to get into it <laughs> because it was so easy and like I was so intimidated, like the and it, like but literally I'm like first IO, and now I'm hooked. Right on, yeah. I'm 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 now a I'm now a Bitcoin guy. <laughs> That's awesome to hear, man. That's <laughs> awesome to hear. Um, and uh, I, I mean I know we talked we 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 talked about it before, and um, you kind of I mean I I had the same reaction to it initially too. It's like I you know I'll maybe I'll learn it eventually. Um, but you know, it's kind of, uh, uh, it's, it's kind of daunting, right? Um, but as far as user friendliness, it wasn't too bad for you? Uh, no, no. Um, it was, it was surprisingly, almost embarrassingly easy to, 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 to learn Samurai Wallet, to learn purse.io and then like to learn how to transfer Bitcoin between float and, and my Samurai Wallet. It was like just a regular it was it was easier it was literally easier than doing like a regular bank transfer or any sort of like online purchases it right. was and i'm i'm up i'm kind of embarrassed that it took me this long to get into it <laughs> because it was so easy and like i was so intimidated like there's there's so much technology out there and, and so many people are throwing things at you in regards to cryptocurrency and blockchain and and all this other new technology and Mm -hmm. i'm kind of an old fuddy in that in that realm so i was intimidated but like doing it like you talk about vaughn who just fucking do it just do it and i was it was so easy it and it like literally i'm like one of the least technical guys out there and i can easily do it so Right. Pretty yeah. much anybody can do it. <laughs> yeah, and and uh, I, I mentioned to you in pre-show that uh, I mean, and you didn't just toss it. You didn't just set up a Coinbase a Coinbase account with a wallet. I mean, you've you've got a you've got the the Samurai wallet, which comes with uh, you know the the, the coin yeah. join mixing. So um, that's uh, well, yeah, um, I'm, that's I'm, even better. I'm ignorant on the issue. I'm not. I'm ignorant on the issue. I'm not retarded on the issue. 
like I don't I like I I didn't know but I still know what not to do and yeah no no uh no coin base no fed base um I I knew I knew samurai from our previous talks uh I think samurai was one of them and then like um Edge Wallet, which is mentioned on on Free Talk Live a lot, and there was a couple other wallets I was considering, but after talking to you, it was like Samurai was the only way to go. Right. Right. Ridiculous amount of security, by the way. Like having having to put in your code every time you go into it, and like the 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 sixteen word backup that you have to write down, and it's just, mm-hmm. I love it. I love the amount of security that it has. Right. Right. Oh. Yeah, that's uh, it's good to hear, man. That is, uh, it's definitely, definitely good to hear. Um, yeah, and it, it's, uh, it's, it, it can get addicting, uh, it really can. I mean, and, and you know, like it's, it's, I don't know, like for LUA, LUA publications, I use Bitcoin. Like that's just what I use. Uh, it's easier than dealing with, uh, it's easier than dealing with with banks a lot of times. And I mean, fees are cheaper than PayPal a lot of a lot of times. It's not a dollar or two dollars. It's like maybe 50 or 75 cents um which isn't bad at all and the fact that it takes you know 10 10 minutes most of the time um and i'll talk about this and in, in, yeah, in introduction it... later on but um but yeah i mean and, and to, to to get confirmation to, to get transaction confirmed in a block or two is not hard to do um and people will complain it, it about me, having uh, to pay like five me... or ten dollars for fees and that's not that's yeah if you're doing that um then yeah you, you shouldn't be <laughs> I think, it, I think it took me like 70 cents to transfer from my uh, float dot app to the samurai wallet and it was and it was done like three or four minutes it was really fast mm-hmm. so yeah yep indeed and it looks like uh, I'm looking at YouTube right now and it's saying that it's not receiving enough video to maintain smooth streaming um, but I'm checking every once in a while, and it looks like it might. It looks like it's still going through. And uh, I went ahead and hit record on OBS just in case, like in case YouTube failed, we've still got the recording. So um, <laughs> we are, yeah, we're all right. But uh, and hopefully, hopefully we're live. If not, then uh, you know, that's, I guess it, it could. It, I guess it could be. You know, I, I don't know. There's a, a, a snowstorm here. It's not. Uh, it's not bad out um, now. But uh, and, and satellite internet was showing showing good connection but uh i don't know we'll see we will uh we'll see um but yeah i guess as, as far as for me um any any uh, particular updates um i do want to mention that uh, over at lui publications we are offering 50 percent off our proofreading and editing services uh until january 1st 2000 uh, i guess uh, yeah january 1st 2020 um so yeah until the end of the year 50 percent off proofreading and editing services uh, we'd certainly love to help you uh bring uh help you with uh, your goal of bringing uh bring uh you know publishing a book uh, we'd love to help um so yeah email me shane at libertyintertack.com or visit libertyintertack.com forward slash publish uh, and uh, we can uh, we can chat and uh, certainly uh, certainly help you out. And uh, also, since uh, you know there's another holiday coming up, uh, I'll probably do uh, I'll probably do uh, another special on books here soon. Um, so uh, if you missed uh, missed the last one, um, then uh, you know never fear. Um, there will be uh, there'll be another one coming up. Uh, here very very uh, very soon so um, yeah we'll start uh, uh, so yeah today's podcast is number 66 uh, on the main podcast feed the uh, well, I, I guess actually let me back up for a moment was there anything else Jason that you wanted to uh, wanted to bring up nope okay cool very good so yeah today's podcast is number 66 on the main podcast feed um, the I think 22nd uh, in this long crypto anarchy, uh, anarchy series which actually started yeah, this is this shocked me, Jason. It started on May eighth, two uh, twenty eighteen. <laughs> I saw that. Yeah, it's uh. <laughs> this series has been in two countries, that's, that's... like three different. Yeah, like three. Uh, yeah, I guess three. Basically, three different. Um, three different uh, um, places I lived. Um, the series. The series traveled around quite a bit. <laughs> it's it's longer than some podcasts live. That is true. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I, I suppose, I suppose there were plenty of, uh, plenty of gaps in there as well. Um, there wasn't, uh, wasn't the most, uh, I guess, uh, <laughs> um, wasn't stable. Like the, the first, I, I think the first three or four years, basically every Sunday and then towards the end, every Sunday and Thursday I was doing a show. Um, like it was really, really consistent and there would be, it'd be, it'd be very rare that I missed a show. And then, yeah, there have been, uh, 
um, yeah, some some gaps. Things have gotten busy, but uh, now that all I have to do is just you get that gets you know prepare for the show, uh, do the live stream, and then uh, you know toss over uh, the file to uh, to Lily Forrester. Um, it's uh, it's a lot easier. I, the podcast editing is just after four years, man. It just got old. <laughs> I used to really enjoy yeah. it, but no, not anymore. Not anymore. It it, bec- it becomes almost like um like a task, like something like mundane, like you have to do. Right. You know, and it is just it it does it does lose its appeal after a while, and you have to force yourself to do it. But then every every once in a while you do it, and it just it feels really good to do it. So you keep doing it. Right. <laughs> yeah. 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 So that I guess so yeah, that's that that's 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 a good thing. But yeah, it's it's uh May eighth, twenty eighteen. That's that's crazy. Crazy. Nineteen months in the works, but uh, but it ends today. Uh so yeah, we'll start by uh, briefly recapping the twenty two episodes, uh minus the few that involved shit coinery on my part. Uh then we'll provide our overall conclusions about the strategy <laughs> of crypto anarchy and its efficacy and helping Ava Nguyen become more invulnerable to coercion. And, uh, of course, well, maybe not of course, because we might not actually be live. Um, if if we are live, please feel free to drop any questions and questions or comments in chat, since this might be a live stream. Um, so, yeah, before we get to definitions and recapping, though, I would like to take a few minutes and uh, reiterate my personal position on Bitcoin and uh, the cryptocurrency space in general. So, obviously, I interview plenty of folks I would likely identify as Bitcoin maximalists as part of the series. Uh, there are some damn good reasons for that. Uh, in a word, it's because Bitcoin, BTC, to be clear, is the only government hard money uh, that I see as existing today. Uh, by government hard, I mean the uh, that the only enforcement or inter- uh, interference the state really has is uh, fiat on and off ramps. Uh, so, going from U.S. dollars to Bitcoin and, and vice versa. So to, to explicate further, every proof-of-work blockchain is vulnerable to 51% attacks or has already fallen prey to chain reorganizations, just as what happened with BCH, uh, the, the BCH blockchain uh, in June of this year. And that's just one one example of many. Furthermore, there's this open-source principle, if I can call it, um, that of uh, uh, don't trust verify. Uh, well, the way you verify on the Bitcoin network is by running your own full node. That's how you can check to ensure individual transactions follow the consensus consensus rules. And for that barrier to entry to be low, block sizes must be small. For example, just imagine how much additional storage would be needed for infinite blocks on the BSV shitcoin network. It would be cost prohibitive when you just when you when you consider just how much storage would be necessary versus the one to two terabyte hard drives that will last multiple years um, with Bitcoin, like the one I have. It lasts multiple years. That's not a problem. Um, not a problem at all. Um, but yeah, I mean, as far as the as far as the infinite blocks or I guess uh, um, big blocks model, I don't see a way that such an architecture does not fall prey to centralization. So if you really want to do anarchy things like exercise personal responsibility for your money and privacy, you run your own full node. Um, you don't connect and trust someone else's on a network that is vulnerable to 51% attacks and chain reorganizations. And um, also, too, and, and this is one of the most common complaints, for those who con- uh, continue to complain about fees, I use Bitcoin very often for LOA publications, and I never pay high fees or wait long for transactions. Just ask my freelancers. They'll tell, they'll tell you. Um, there's you know one, one, or two block, one or two blocks, no problem. Um, so, yeah, here's how you avoid higher fees and longer transaction times. Um, there's a website, bitcoinfees.earn.com. It'll pop up with uh, with bar graphs. Um, so yeah, these bar graphs will show the network congestion. It's a very it's very easy to interpret. Um, the bar graphs show the network congestion at various fee levels and the estimated block confirmation time. Oftentimes, it is possible to get a transaction confirmed faster for cheaper just by choosing a satoshi level that estimates a shorter block time. Uh, for example, at the 29 to 30 satoshi level, it might estimate two to three blocks, but at 13 to 14, it might be zero to one. Um, and obviously, use a wallet where you can customize the fees, um, not one that just automatically determines it. Because if it if if it determines that the the blockchain is congested, it's going to choose a high fee um, to get to get your transaction prioritized. But I'll, that but that's that's not necessary. Totally not necessary. So um, I will put uh, obviously I'll put put links in the show notes because um, yeah, no need. There's no need to no need to pay uh, to pay high Bitcoin fees um, or uh, to to wait long for transactions. So. Um, I just wanted to, to yeah, get, get that out of the way real quick. So yeah, I'll summarize the privacy and security tools when I recap the episode with Max Hillebrandt, but I'd like to make one final comment on privacy. Uh, while some of the privacy implementations in, say, Monero might be interesting, uh, there's one feature that Monero or any other cryptocurrency won't have any time in the near future, and that is the prevalence and frequency of transactions uh, on the Bitcoin blockchain. 
Um, now, on this podcast, we've talked about becoming the gray man, or we've talked about, yeah, becoming a gray man or blending into the crowd in the survival society. The idea is that if you don't draw attention, you can avoid detection. In terms of Bitcoin, it's far easier to blend your transactions into the background noise of the blockchain versus, say, the optional shielded Zcash transaction pool, where you might have a thousand transactions where encrypt crypt analysis is, is super, is, it's, 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 it's easier than you would think, um, w even, with this, even with the privacy tools there. So um, it's not it's not it's not easy or it's not hard to make a mistake. Um, so yeah, um, just a side note: the privacy is optional. Hardly anyone will use it, and that's been kind of the the, the, the trend with Zcash. Um, at least it was um, up until recently. So yeah, in conclusion, for me personally, I just don't I just don't really see any use for any other cryptocurrency. Um, I saw a use for Monero until about May of last year, but it was so difficult to use and access my money. I I just kind of said fuck it. Um, and now with Bitcoin, uh, you know, running your own full node, um, Lightning Network, um, Wasabi Wallet, CoinJoin, coin, you know, mixing, all that stuff. Um, you know, privacy is privacy is, is, is pretty good on Bitcoin um, if, you, if, you, if you don't just do transactions on the base chain. So, um, mm -hmm. yeah, uh, I, think I'll, I think I'll wrap up there uh, for, for the moment. But I'm, I imagine I'll have some more comments on the topic uh, as we recap particular episodes. Um, so, Jason, you got anything here uh, before I... Four definitions. Anything to comment so far? No. Uh, the only thing I was going to mention was the, the privacy of the gray man. We, we, we would have a couple episodes talking about that. Uh, but the average Bitcoin user bit or privacy and, and the gray man, it's not something that they really worry about. So it's, I, I, so the, the other shit coins, I mean, they're going to not, what's the word I'm looking for? They're, 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 they're going to dabble in them and, and not really understand the point of of, of privacy and, and, and the necessity for privacy. But um, as we've talked about before with, with the, the, the need for privacy, especially digital privacy in today's age, dabbling yeah. in the shit coins and, and trying to make any real money in, in the alternatives to Bitcoin, you're, you're, you're going to stand out. You're absolutely going to stand out if you don't exercise your privacy. So if you want privacy, you're going to have to go to Bitcoin because it's the only place that you can actually blend in. So Yeah, and, and I will say as far as, as far as another possible way, and, and this might be another layer on top of mixing, um, is uh, – and I'm, I'm pretty sure I've, – I've heard this elsewhere. I remember where I've heard it. But um, basically, yeah, use a, use a mixer, like use Wasabi or Samurai. But then also, like, it wouldn't mm -hmm. be a terrible idea. Like, maybe maybe through, like, Changely or something, um, you know, do a do a swap of Bitcoin from Monero and the Monero back to Bitcoin. And then your your coins are super washed. I mean, they went through a whole other a whole other blockchain, for, for gosh sakes. Um, so, um, I mean, that, 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 that is a potential use case. Um, but I mean, you could do the same thing with, uh, I, I guess with, uh, with any other, with any other cryptocurrency too. So, um, but, uh, yeah, anything else or, uh, ready for, for, nope. for and, and by the way, um, I was, I looked back at the YouTube chat and it said it wasn't receiving any data for the stream and I, there weren't any viewers and there weren't any, any, uh, um, any, uh, anything popping up in chat. And typically there would be, uh, because there were, there were four people, um, in the, uh, I guess waiting before it started. So yeah, there's 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 an error. Um, so yeah, we are not live anymore. We're just gonna record uh, record the video and the and the audio and uh, and go from there. So, um, all right. Bummer. Def yeah yeah that is kind of disappointing. Uh, definitely disappointing. Oh well. Um, definitions. So, um, crypto anarchy, um, an anarchic school of thought founded on cryptographic methods, as well as a form of a form of anarchism that operates in secret. Now, I did just find that one um, on on Wikipedia, or I get or not Wikipedia. It might just been it might just been a, you know, an internet search, but uh, I thought it was an actually actually a pretty good definition. Um, and uh, I guess a second a second possible definition related, um, as per my discussion with smuggler, is the removing or obfuscation of attribution uh, so that punishment cannot come. Um, so yeah, those are the definitions of crypto anarchy. Um, and I don't even think we covered. Um, I don't think we ever actually defined crypto anarchy, <laughs> which is bad. That's that's All that right. might be the first time. <laughs> We'd ever, and in, in I guess ever in a series where we hadn't done definitions first. So, well, we we got we got we got it covered now. So better better late than never. <laughs> so, um, all right, that's definitions. Now a recap of the 22 episodes again, starting May 8th, 2018. That's crazy. Um, yeah, 19 months. Um, and again, minus my shit coinery. 
So for each episode, we're going to cover <laughs> we're going to cover the strategies and tools, uh, the current status, user friendliness, and our overall critique. So there are 22 episodes. Um, we could go super in depth um, and do like a three-hour episode, um, but I told Jason before, beforehand I was like, feel free to be selective. Um, because hey, well, we got 22 episodes to choose from. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna talk about them all, you know, or, or, or I'm not gonna talk about them all. And some I'm just gonna briefly summarize. So, um, some some conversations will, will be more in depth than others. But uh, yeah, we're just recapping here, um, covering basically yeah what we what we covered uh, in here in this crypto anarchism series. So, um, the first one, <clears throat> keeping communication secure, the importance of encryption. Uh, the strategies and tools, uh, pretty good privacy for email, um, off the record for um, instant messaging, uh, encryption, encrypted instant messaging, uh, Zimmerman real-time protocol uh, for encrypted VoIP. Um, I don't know what protocol Signal uses, but Signal's an encryption app. Um, there's Telegram, uh, Telegram secret chats. There's all sorts of um, privacy strategies and tools that we talked about, Jitsi um, being another um, that, I've, uh, that, that I use uh, relatively, relatively often. Um, so the current status. Um, cryptography works well um, if it's if it's uh, yeah cryptography works well uh, as long as it's, as long as it's implemented correctly um, so yeah encryption works cryptography works um, that's that's a fact um, now of course though the operating system the software the encryption is running on um, is is uh, is very important um, now as user friendliness uh, as, as for user friendliness um, it's very user friendly now uh, like signal and telegram chats um, obviously you know on spot on spy phones it's not this not the most secure it's, it's there's possible there's vulnerabilities but um, generally speaking um, you know it's 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 better to use those apps than not um, so yeah very there's, user, there's very user be... friendly and, and, and they're improving every day but yeah go ahead I was gonna say there's gonna be vulnerabilities no matter how you communicate period right. that's just the way it is yeah of course, yeah. If you're if you're communicating over the internet, there's there's yeah there's definitely vulnerabilities, and uh, yeah for sure. Um, so yeah uh, yeah user friendliness very user friendly overall critique. Um, encryption is totally worth utilizing. Um, you know I advocate it 100. percent But um, for things that need to remain private, further steps might be advised. Um, so for example, dual layer encryption. Uh, which is a chapter in Calvary and Spook just below the surface to guide to security culture, which you can pick up at libertyunderattack.com. Um, and uh, so yeah, uh, dual layer dual layer encryption uh, encryption is uh, combining ho high and low tech methods. So basically, it would be you know using a manual cipher, um, keying that into a computer, um, encrypting that with PGP. Then the individual on the other end would decrypt the P they would uh, decrypt it with PGP on their end, and then they would do the manual decryption on the on on their on the other end. So it's just a, another another layer, um, and and one that I would I would certainly mm -hmm. recommend. But. Uh, um, what, what, what do you think about, uh, yeah, encryption? Um, it's needed. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's, that's about, that's about the, the, the limit of my knowledge of encryption. Like I, I, I understand it, uh, from a very, um, basic standpoint. Um, and, and I, I have a bad habit of, of relying on others when it comes to, encryption and, and them telling me what's good or what's not. So like I, I listen to you on encryption and Jamie Baconic on encryption and, and a few other people, but like I use Telegram, I use Signal. I try to use like Facebook Messenger as little as possible. Um, so I, I I take basic steps, but I, I don't like I don't have PGP or anything. Right. Right. So understood. Understood. I understand so. the I understand its use very much so. Yeah. Or under, I understand the the need to use it. Right. And the the possibilities that you can do with it. Yeah. Yeah, indeed. Indeed. Um and uh, uh yeah, so for the next one, uh, mesh networking, uh, applications for self liberators. Now this was one of two episodes on on the subject of mesh networking. Uh, this one would have been back uh, back in I think June. Um June of uh, of last year. Right before, um, yeah, with Brian Sovereign, it was right before the, the Midwest Peace Liberty Fest, and it was right before I hit the road um, to move to Austin. Um, so, the, yeah, timing there is interesting. But anyway, um, yeah, mesh networking, applications for self-liberators, uh, strategies and tools, uh, mesh networking, of course, uh, data mules, vehicles that carry a computer with storage between remote locations to effectively create a data link. 
Um, TX Tena, Mesh Networking a uh, Applications for Bitcoin, which uh, I talked about with, with Richard Myers, so I'll, I'll come back to that. Uh, the Briar Project, a uh, messaging app designed for activists and journalists that uses Bluetooth or Wi-Fi uh, that's not reliant upon the, the centralized, uh, I guess, uh, cellular, cellular telecommunications network. Uh, now, the current status, it's still, still very much in the early stages. Um, TX Tena and Global Mesh Labs are doing some great work. Uh, but a true alternative to the internet, as we know it, is still a little ways out. Um, doesn't mean that, uh, yeah, you can't use mesh networks for Bitcoin transactions or Lightning Network and things of that nature. But um, as far as uh, the, the overarching goal where, um, you know, the centralized sensor, uh, sensor-prone internet, um, uh, where there's truly really an alternative to that. So, um, yeah, user-friendliness, I really don't know. Um, <laughs> I've never, uh, I've never, I have not uh, used mesh networking myself yet, so I can't, I can't speak to that. I can't speak to TX10. I can't speak to the Briar app because I don't have an Android phone, not yet. Um, so yeah, can't really speak much to the user friendliness of these. Um, now, overall critique, uh, it's critically important for the future of freedom, and I'll turn it over to you now, Jason. I have nothing. <laughs> okay. Next one, ZeroNet, decentralized, uncensorable websites. Uh, so strategies and tools. Uh, clearly, you know, it's the decentralized. Uh, or, uh, you know, ZeroNet, uh, which is a decentralized peer-to-peer -peer uncensorable website um, over the BitTorrent network. Current status, uh, it's still being developed. Uh, I haven't used the app in a while, admittedly. Um, yeah, just, just, just haven't. Um, yeah, so for, for user friendliness, uh, back when we talked about this, this was yeah, when I was in Austin. Kyle, this is one of the first episodes, I guess, mm -hmm. one of the only episodes Colin and I recorded in the same studio. Um, but, uh, um, yeah, I remember, yeah, I remember, uh, I remember browsing through it. Um, but, uh, yeah, so, uh, let me see, user friendliness, um, for browsing and accessing that, the network, um, just like if you're, if you're browsing the internet, uh, you know, browse through, through, uh, uh, Firefox or something like that <clears throat> for accessing the network. It's very, very easy. Um, I was, I was. I was surprised by the user friendliness of it. Um, now I will say on the other end, um, to, to actually set up a website um, is quite complicated. Uh, I, I spent quite a bit of time on it. I had my, uh, my, my Darklands developer, Matthew Raymer, work on it a little bit too with me. And uh, just kind of gave up. Didn't, didn't have time for it. You know, it didn't happen within a couple few hours. Uh, so kind of kind of gave up. And now overall critique, uh, I think it's a great idea. It's, 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 Definitely needed, you know. As I said, with with mesh networking, if for if for some reason, unfortunately, uh, mesh networking isn't, you know, mesh networking is, uh, um, you know, down the road a little bit. I think zero net could be an intermediate solution. Um, you know, if we can't if we can't uh, decentralize the network, we can at least decentralize the websites, make those make those, uh, you know, uh, more invulnerable to coercion. Um, so. I, I I think it's uh, it's it's definitely necessary, and um, Cipher Assassin uh, I, I saw him I saw him talk about this on Twitter. Uh, who, a previous guest on this podcast uh, who audits a, a lot of these tech, a lot of these projects, he audits the code and such. Um, he gave Zero Net the go ahead, so um, that's that's enough for me. Uh, it's definitely a project worth following. Mm -hmm. What do you think, Jason? Same. I mean, every little bit helps, and if, if zero net is a good in, uh, mediary between um, the the open net and and an actual like dark net, then yeah. Surely, yeah. yeah. That just sounded that sounded really stupid. <laughs> no, it may, no, you're you're right. You're you're exactly right. You're exactly right. Um, and uh, <laughs> a, a along that same line of thought, then the next episode's digital second realms, uh, the deep web and decentralized Yay! marketplaces. So yeah, Zeronet would be a digital second realm. I guess it would have made more sense to cover digital second realms beforehand, but hey, whatever. Um, <laughs> so yeah, the deep web and decentralized marketplaces. So some of the t strategies and tools we talked about, some of the software uh, is the deep web. Uh, Tor, uh, the Onion Router, uh, Open Bazaar, Bisc, etc. Uh, the current status of these, uh, they're all still being worked on, contributed to. Uh, the Tor network is uh, is getting increased focus, it seems, with individuals seeking to expand the throughput of the network. So that's uh, that's a positive. Um, yeah, Open Bazaar is still alive, or, or still around and kicking. Um, I set up a store on there um, a while ago. Haven't gotten any orders. I don't think many people browse there. I don't look look there um, often. Um, same with Bisc. Um, yeah, just yeah, haven't haven't done a whole lot with it, but I I, I do have it on my computer. I have uh, I have downloaded it and used it. Um, all of these things work. They're continually being developed on, so that's uh, that's definitely a good thing. Um, as far as the user friendliness, yeah, the Tor and the Deep Web are very easy to use. Uh, learning the uh, on the other hand, or I guess a caveat here, learning the ins and outs of pro the proper way to use Tor and browse the Deep Web. That's a different story. 
Um, but as far as just using, <laughs> using, you know, you know, downloading Tor and hopping on the deep web, that's that's not hard to do at all. Um, same with, like I said, with both uh, Open Bazaar and Bisc, I've used those. Um, both, yeah, both, both pretty user friendly. Um, on that note, so that's 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 a positive. Um, overall critique or conclusion, uh, digital second realms. Uh, yeah, they're important. I mean, yeah, the, all, all this. All, I, I don't know what else to say. Um, you know, uh, I, I obviously I think physical. You know, uh, you know these physical second realms and, and physical space and time are important, but um, the digital ones are important too. Um, so yeah. Yeah, it's the only place you can be truly anonymous on the internet. I mean, right. what's 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 wrong with that? I mean, that 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 should be the issue. That should be the issue. Why can't you be anonymous on the internet outside of these places? But right. yes, that's that's why they're important. Yep, indeed, indeed. Um, next one, uh, anonymous and encrypted phones. Is it possible? And this this episode actually originated with an article that I wrote. Um, Kyle was uh, doing his uh, his just his just below the surface. He got his security culture. Um, he was working on his anthology. Is where he was working on all the individual articles though. And uh, he didn't have a phone. Um, he, he, yeah, he didn't have a phone, um, at this time, uh, back in 2016. And, uh, he wanted me to, I guess, uh, do my own little security audits, even though I didn't really know m much of what I was doing. Uh, my conclusion's different now than it was then. Um, uh, but, uh, yeah, I did some experiments for him. I, um, tried, tried to figure out how much personal identifiable information is necessary to activate a burner phone, for example. So I, I, I contacted customer support for these various, uh, cell phone companies. And uh, yeah, I figured out what was. Uh, I figured out that it, was, it it seemed conceptually possible that you could have privacy on, uh, that that you could you you could buy a uh, buy uh, a, a burner phone with a prepaid gift card or cash a, pre, a prepaid gift card or cash. Um, you activate it with just with just a zip code or or just uh, um, or no personal identifiable information at all. And then you um, use apps like Signal and you don't uh, download the Google Play Store and you you try to keep your 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 browsing patterns and such different on that phone and all. Um, I, f I figured it was conceptually possible, but unfortunately, I, I, I'm not really sure anymore. Um, just based off of the way, um, <clears throat> yeah, ba basically, just um, yeah, privacy is not a feature of the architecture of cell cellular telephony. So um, yeah, I just don't really see it as see it as possible. But anyway, I'll, I'll, I'll get through the the normal four points here. Um, I'll quit rambling. So strategies and tools. We talked about burner phones, pay phones. Which yeah, I'm not even going to talk about pay phones. That's a that's not an option for like 99% of people. Um, not revealing any personal info, info, personal identifiable information when activating the phone. Utilizing privacy apps and privacy friendly app stores, etc. Um, the current status: phones are pretty terrible for privacy, and they aren't really getting any better. Uh, thankfully, it appears the underlying encryption of the devices is, is improving, but backdoors, targeted updates, etc., uh, are all still problems. Uh, user friendliness: uh, acquiring and activating a burner phone isn't difficult. But necessarily having to swap out phones, numbers, and possibly SIM cards often to maintain privacy um, is a pain in the ass that I don't think most people will want to go through. So, um, I mean, that seems like the only plausible way that you could have privacy is if you, yeah, I mean, you know, act like the criminals that use the burner phones, switch them out a lot. <laughs> so, um, yeah, overall critique, which I kind of already went into, my conclusion changed. Um, yeah, I mean... If I I have a phone, um, I need one. A lot of people need them. Do what you can. What else can What else can I say, right? <laughs> Pretty much. Yeah, yeah. You got anything else? Nope. Okay. All right. Uh, next one: manufacturing the means of self-defense, three D printing, and ghost gunning. This was uh, an episode you and I did, Jason. Um, probably around August of, of last <laughs> year, I think, if I if I remember correctly. But uh, some some of the strategies and tools, obviously, 3D printing and ghost gunning. Uh, the current status, as far as innovation and contribution, it's never been better. Um, now, the legality oh. question is uh, the legality question is a bit more complicated, though. Um, and uh, I'll just kind of leave it at leave it at that for for now. <laughs> things are things are things are moving in, in, in the right direction. Uh, well, they're moving yeah, moving in the right direction, I'd say. Um, user friendliness. I don't know personally. Um, I've never. Uh, I, 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 I. I've never done this. Um, so I. I yeah, personally don't know. Uh, from testimonials and research, though, uh, it seems to be relatively user friendly. Um, and my overall critique in a world of red flag laws and gun control, being able to manufacture the means of self-defense has never been more important. So, Jason, what do you think? <laughs> um, ditto. Uh, red flags, gun control, being able to manufacture means of self-defense has never been more important. Oh my God! Yes, 
Um, especially when you look at places like Virginia right now, which is literally getting ready to pop its top with, with all the gun control bills already being submitted and the Democrats haven't even taken full control of the House and Senate and governorship yet. Um, like counties, counties in Virginia have already passed like militia ordinances. <laughs> That's like, crazy. Gun control, gun major gun control is coming to Virginia, um, to Pennsylvania, to um, California. Just passed a bunch more. Georgia's passing some. Uh, Kentucky submitted a few bills. Um, federally, there had been some bills submitted. So, gun control is coming, whether you like it or not. The Overton window has shifted, and people are cl starting to clamor for it. So, being able to 3D print or to use ghost gunners um, or to 80% lower us, which buy those now yeah. because they're going to go away. Um, Pennsylvania, the Attorney General has just instructed the police to to, to handle 80% lowers like they would regular firearms. So that's going to spread also. Right. So yes, absolutely important. Yeah, and, um, and uh, you know, it's... it's deterrence it's... dispense... Deterrence dispense. Go find deterrence dispense on, on Keybase or uh, Speech, um, and download their programs or download their plans for like the Melendez magazines and the the G17 and the G19 lowers and um, the FGC9, which is coming out soon. Uh, and deterrence dispense. They just released uh, plans for 3D printed. I don't know, not 3D printed, but 3D machined. Um, suppressors so it's out there yeah and and i mean you you, you make a great point um and and i'll just kind of uh, uh just go, go a little further here and, and and say that um you know it's it seems like uh like uh, like for for a while like my, my my mindset was based or my viewpoint was oh like in america no like gun control will never truly be a problem no never it's it's not gonna be um but my my viewpoints on that change it's, it's changed a little bit um <laughs> Yeah, it's uh, it, it definitely has, um, and you know the, these loopholes have existed for for quite some time, um, but as everyone should know with loopholes, what generally happens to them? They get closed. Um, yeah. So yeah, these these things aren't permanent. Um, you know, it's not a, it's it's not a you know a permanent guarantee. So uh, you know, plan accordingly is is kind of just the way that I'll I'll leave leave that. Um, yeah. So, um, yeah, next one, and we'll return to uh, that topic here momentarily. Um, but uh, Darklands, uh, strategies and tools. Well, Darklands is the, is the tool. It's a piece of software that doesn't exist <laughs> yet. Um, it's a privacy-focused freelancing marketplace uh, utilizing Bitcoin for payments and repu uh, reputation. Uh, if you want to learn more about um, Darklands, I did an episode on it. Um, just, yeah, go to uh, bonniepodcast.com, search for Darklands, or just, uh, yeah, you know, Search for it on on your favorite podcatcher app. It should should pop up. Um, but yeah, anyway, uh, current status. It's on hiatus, guys. Sorry. Um, user friendliness. That's that's not possible to answer right now. Um, overall <laughs> overall conclusion of the project. I, I think it's a great idea. I think it needs to exist. Um, but it's a passion project. I mean, the, I mean, the, there's I I mean, there's there's ways to monetize it, but um, I mean, we 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 want it to be. I mean, obviously, it's most importantly, it's 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 a passion project. So we've got to get our own shit our own shit figured out, um, to where we we have we have time to to devote to, to, to devote vote towards that sort of thing. Um, but yeah, if you're a developer interested in helping with that, I mean, that's that's kind of what's what's left. I I'm I never say no to more projects. So. Um, for gosh sakes, if anyone wants to, um, if a developer wants to, to get to work, um, yeah, go to, uh, to darklands.net and you should be able to download the white paper there. Haven't checked. I mean, the, the website's up or it was up last time I checked. It's been a while. Um, but if not, um, yeah, just ship, just ship me an email, shanelibinarattack.com and I can get you, get you, we, we can, we can, we can chat. Um, cause I would like dark, yeah, darklands is, I think it's necessary. Um, yeah, it just doesn't exist yet. Um, anything on darklands? Nope. Okay, so the next one, Crypto Anarchist Life with Smuggler. Uh, so strategies and tools discussed in that episode. Uh, crypto Anarchy, generally speaking, Second Realms, Temporal Autonomous Zones, and Bitcoin, and cryptocurrencies, that good stuff. Um, current status. Um, well, yeah, I mean, yeah, it's certainly advanced anarchy, but I'd say these realms are growing slowly. Um, you know, the, the concept of Second Realms is growing 
people are talking about Taz isn't building a more. Um, Crypto Anarchy's uh, been written about in the Washington Post and outlets like that. So, or it's been mentioned in mainstream news articles. So, I'd say it's growing. Um, user friendliness of, of these strategies is not easy at all. <laughs> but um, yeah, it's it's not easy at all. It, overall conclusion here, though, while, while being difficult, I, I view Crypto Anarchy, the second realm in Taz, as being some of the most efficacious paths towards personal freedom. Um, possible higher risk uh, and difficulty, but high reward. So, for example, it's not easy to coordinate locally um, with people um, and, you know, rent a, rent a spot in a commercial zone and, you know, outfit um, some shipping containers uh, as a temporary autonomous zone, a semi-permanent autonomous zone. That's not easy to do. Like, there's a lot of steps that have to fall into place uh, for that to happen. Um, so it's not easy, but imagine that existing. Like, imagine you having a place like that to go to, like a hacker space or some shit like that. Like, I mean, that'd be pretty cool. Um, and a place to be free, sure, hell yeah. Yeah, I Smuggler is one of those guys that I can listen to. I I could listen to a three hour podcast with Smuggler easily. Um, yeah. But yeah, what he does is not easy at all. Um, <laughs> yeah, it, it, operational it security is not easy, <laughs> and privacy—it's like that's no. it's like the most complicated shit out there, especially in a, in the digital world. Yes, uh, <clears throat> and I've, I've I've mentioned this to other people before in the past, but it would be I I you know like a, a lot of times I'll, I'll I'll read something like like uh, like for example the script cash white paper and it's like. God damn! I wish I was as smart as these pe as smart smart as these pe as these people are. Well, I don't know <laughs> about that. You know, like imagine being like I I, I don't know. Like I, I feel like it would it'd be worse <laughs> in a lot of ways. I don't know. <laughs> anyway, possibly. Anyway, on to the next one here. So the next one uh, deterrence dispense with Ivan the troll uh, strategies and tools. Uh, we'll actually we'll cover these next two at once. So deterrence dispense and gun printing one hundred and one, uh, both with Ivan the troll. Uh, the strategies and tools discussed, uh, ghost gunning and ghost printing for both of them. Um, current status, oh, it's flourishing. <laughs> Fl flourishing. Very, very the, much so. In the face of resistance. Um, user friendliness. Uh, well, thanks to episodes like these two, um, it's more accessible than ever. Um, and those are, like, that is, um, it's, the, it's my number one episode with downloads. I get a shit ton of hits to it just randomly from Google and shit like that. So like those two episodes and like on Reddit, um, they yeah, I mean that 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 it, this shit's getting everywhere. So that's fantastic. Um, and yeah, same 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 overall conclusion as before with many facts that means of self defense. It's it's crucially crucially necessary. But uh, you got anything else? Uh the the idea of three D printing firearms as as a means of protection not just not just as a means of exercise but or, or an exercise of, of right or to exercise his, um intellectual ability no the, the the means of 3d printing as uh as an actual self-defense weapon is here like there, there there are there are reliable 3d printed firearms now yeah, like, like, like for, we talk yeah, about for, for for example, like like ABS pr printed <sighs> nine millimeter Glock, like plastic locks, like that shit, like mm -hmm. you can get ABS plastic, you know, from mm -hmm. like the factory, um, like yep. the, and and yep. you can you can print it too, um, so yeah, like a three hundred dollar three D printer, um, you and then you you get a lower, um, or actually no, you don't even get a lower, you just download the you download yeah. the you download you load up the plastics, you download the program, you hit print, and you've got yourself a lower, and then you yep. just have to get the rest of the components, so, like. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> it's, yep. it's beautifully, when it, when it it's comes beautifully to... simple and elegant. Yes. Um, and they're 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 even getting more like they're this new uh, the FGC nine. Um, it's nine n reliable nine millimeter with a homemade mm -hmm. nine millimeter barrel. And I, there's there's the new one. There's another one. Um, three uh, D printed AK lower. The guy, the guy got to like twelve hundred rounds on the last test before the lower cracked. So 1,200 rounds on a 3D printed AK lower. Like That's when, incredible. when, when Cody was, when, when Cody was doing this, like the liberator pistol was like, was like once every 10 rounds it would fire or once every five rounds it would fire or something like that. 
right. then the, the the AR was like the AR was cracking like on the third or fifth round or something like that when Cody started this. So, but now a thousand rounds on an AK lower. There, there's AR lowers out there with like five and seven thousand rounds. Right, and so, and if and if the lower if the, lo- if the lower breaks, um, I mean, so basically just just have a bunch have a bunch of spare lowers possibly as a as a as a possible suggestion. Just have a bunch of spare lowers because just oh, yeah. because just because the lowers the mm-hmm. plastic lowers break doesn't mean that the doesn't mean the gun parts the, the other other gun components are going to. So you know just. If you can get a thousand a thousand rounds per uh, through through each one, and um, I don't know, I, th- I think Ivan was saying that it costs like two dollars and fifty cents to print a magazine. I doubt it costs much more to print a lower um, for for plastic. But even if it was, you know, even if they cost you twenty or thirty dollars a piece, um, that's a that's still relatively relatively damn cheap, uh, you know, re- relatively cheap. So, um, oh, yeah. incredibly cheap. <laughs> yeah, indeed, indeed. Um, oh. All right, next one here. <clears throat> um, the cypherpunk life with cypher assassin uh, strategies and tools uh, we talked about human mixing services uh, barter crypto anarchy generally speaking um, just go listen to the episode I mean just he's, he's very knowledgeable at uh, what he does very much in the realm of smuggler and, and Frank Braun um, who uh, yeah, we'll talk about um, momentarily but uh, the current status same as second realm crypto anarchy above for, for, for the current status user friendliness and overall overall conclusion I think the verification strategies I just, I just think it's it's super super difficult for average people like us <laughs> so yeah um, all right next one here uh, four thieves vinegar collective with dr. Michael Laufer uh, this is a cool one uh, strategies and tools uh, I ma- l- yeah making your own medicine 3d printing a freaking micro lab um, N of one trials like uh, decentralized peer-to-peer medicine. Um, yeah, this shit's awesome. Uh, so current status: uh, the realm of DIY medicine is growing and expanding, um, from the Fourth East Vinegar Collected to the Open Insulin Project to the Citizen Science Foundation. All of these things are, are really, really cool um, that they're coming about. Uh, user friendliness: uh, as for making your own medicine or your own micro lab, you're gonna gonna assume that's that's a little bit difficult. I watched a presentation where 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 Dr. Laufer was demonstrating the uh, the micro lab. Yeah, this isn't this isn't um, the same thing as downloading Signal. Um, no, we're not there yet. Um, the Epi, the on the other, on the other hand, though, the EpiPen, um, the thirty dollars EpiPen, that's I I don't see a way that you can screw that up. Um, just how how simple how simple he made it. Um, so that's that's a good thing. Um, that's a good thing. Um, let me see. Overall, overall conclusion, critique. Well, <clears throat> as costs of healthcare and medicine continue to increase and society becomes sicker as a whole, um, yeah, individuals will have to take their health into their own hands. And um, in this case specifically, um, yeah, I mean, some people are going to have to, you know, make their own medicine uh, to survive. They're going to be built people that, you know, that can't afford insulin that might need to make it themselves. And well, it's you think, well, that's crazy. Well, what's the alternative? Dying? Yeah. Um, so yeah. yeah, it's 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 going to be necessary for sure. Yep. What's the alternatives are what dying or begging government for help? Well, government's the reason it's so expensive because of the artificial monopolies that they create. Yep. So, yes, I love Four Thieves Vinegar Collective. I love this whole the 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 whole uh, uh, making your own medicine, taking your own health into into your own hands and. And you like taking big pharma out of this, out of the system, out of the story, out of your life. I absolutely this this was a good episode. Yeah, they're all good episodes, but that was a really good episode. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> I agree. Um, so next one here: homebrew cyber weapons for fun and profit with our good friend Jamin Baconic. Uh, so strategies and tools uh, that we discussed: uh, homebrew, uh, or I guess uh, we we discussed ghost pads. Uh, Wi-Fi cracking, freedom boxes, pirate boxes, um, a couple of those things, which will be coming to the LUA Publications store sometime in the very, very <laughs> near future. Um, current status: uh, none of these things are new and uh, have been pretty consistently worked on for years. Um, there's lots to come. Um, there's there's lots to come um, as far as the the hardware, because I, I mean, we me- we mentioned that you know encryption works. <clears throat> um, but yeah, the hardware and the operating systems um, are problems. Um, well, if you have, if you use ghost pads, you use freedom boxes, pirate boxes, you use these uh, these these pieces of hardware, you can you can mitigate um, uh, some of those things. So um, that's uh, that's that's a positive uh, as far as user friendliness. Uh, that's improving. 
Um, thanks to hardware hackers like Jamie Baconic, um, who are who. Uh, <clears throat> if I were if I if I were forced to myself um, to make one of these pirate boxes, I probably would never do it. But since Jamin's going to do it, nope. and it's going to be pretty it's going to be pretty <laughs> cheap, um, and it's going to route all my network traffic over a VPN or Tor, whatever I decide. Shit, yeah, like I'll do it now. Yeah, just set, send one of them over here. I'll I'll, I'll hook <laughs> it up. No no problem. Um, so yeah, that's great. Um, overall overall conclusion, critique, all crucially important tools. Um, kind of the same conclusion as a lot of these things. But uh, what do you think, Jason? Ditto. Just ditto what you said. Yeah. Perfect. Um, next one: the proliferation of Bitcoin privacy and security tools with Max Hillebrand. Um, yeah, strategies and tools that we discuss, which we've already discussed today um, already. Uh, Wasabi and Samurai, uh, those are both privacy wallets. Uh, the Lightning Network, uh, the Noddle device, um, which, again, the Noddle is, is what I uh, what I have uh, set up, Bitcoin full node, Lightning Network node, um, all that good stuff. Uh, and then also a cold card hardware wallet, uh, we discussed that. Um, the current status of these uh, all seem to work well and are consistently being developed upon. Um Maybe, uh, I guess, yeah, maybe delve, delve a dip deeper into them individually. Um, I will say that um, as far as privacy, you know, I, I have to mention this as far as privacy, but if you go on Twitter and you kind of follow, there's there's kind of an ongoing feud going on between Wasabi and Samurai. Um, apparently the, the OneCoin folks, um, they that had like a $4 billion Ponzi scheme um, over, in, over in Asia somewhere, <laughs> they, they apparently laund uh, tried to launder a bunch of fucking money through Wasabi. Um, and I think, I think uh, there was, there's an interview that was done on, um, was it the Stephen Levera podcast? I think it was, um, they like Wasabi was like, it was capable of mixing like maybe 2000 coins a day or something, but they were trying to do like 200,000 through it, like daily or some shit. Like it was, it was, so th th they're, they're talking about possible, um, po possible privacy issues with Wasabi. I don't know. I'm not a developer. I figure I'll, 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 I'll put it out here for you guys to, to look into. Um, and Yeah. So I, I don't know shit about this, guys. Um, so you'll have to you'll you'll have to fight you'll have to figure it out yourself. Just I'm trying to looks like I'm trying to figure it out too. Um, <laughs> but yeah, there, there's there's quite a few articles on on, on Medium. Just uh, you, you, if, if you you just search for it, you can find it, or just reach out to me. Uh, I might put some stuff in the show notes. We'll see. Um, let me see. Uh, current status, uh, which I already covered. User friendliness. Um, Wasabi and uh, so so Jason spoke to, to Samurai um, uh, I guess earlier on in this episode. Um, for Wasabi, I can speak to as far as user friendliness. Um, yeah, it's uh, it's it's just a Windows EXE file. You just download it um, for a Windows machine or Linux machine or Mac machine. I think I think it's a Mac on Mac OS too. It's just a normal EXE file. You don't have to compile it from source or anything, which is good. Um, so yeah, you download it, you open it up. The user interface is very nicely laid out. You can't, I mean, you can't screw it up. Um, mm -hmm. Good design. No complaints. No complaints uh, on 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 my ends. Um, so yeah. Um, let's see. Having I haven't used Samurai, Samurai myself. I have used Lightning Network. Um, again, I've got the Noddle. I've got I've got the Zap Wallet on my on my uh, my spy phone. Um, yeah, I've, I've got payment channels open on the Lightning Network. Wasn't really actually that complicated. I was very, very surprised. Um, <laughs> very, very surprised. Um, so yeah, we we talked about um, the Noddle device, the use, user friendliness of that. It's one click installs for all these things. Um, that's a good thing. Um, so user friendliness is good in that in that regard. I actually have not used the cold card wallet yet. I have one, but I have just I have not had 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 the need to use it. Um, so um, at some point, I will report back um, on that. Um, overall critique or conclusion conclusion uh, the progress in this realm is incredible to see and uh, will only get better so mm -hmm. um, what do you think uh, yeah the uh, samurai wallet was super duper 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 easy to use and it has an incredible amount of features that I have no idea what they do <laughs> because I'm techno illiterate most of the time so but <laughs> it's really easy to use and and super secure, and I love having to sign into it every time, um, unlike literally every other app on my phone. Right. So, yes, Sam Samurai, um, I can give a big thumbs up to. And, um, yes, they, they are the, uh, um, the progress in the realm. There's new products coming out every day. The technology is advancing every single day. So it's only going to get better and better and better and better and better. Right. Yeah, I agree. 
I, uh, I, I definitely agree. Um, making these uh, where, where it used to be super complicated, um, like where it used to be super complicated mm -hmm. to um, to set up a node um, to, to do all of these things. Whereas now, um, so much of that is abstracted away from the user. Um, and in, in a lot of regards, that's great. Um, obviously, um, the easier you make it, um, yeah, you, you run into trade-offs with security. But um, I mean... Maybe maybe sacrificing a little in security is worthwhile if the alternative is these nodes or you know the these full nodes not existing at all, right? So these people not uh, you know having their own Bitcoin private mm -hmm. keys. Um, so yeah, I, I think it's I think it's uh, it's uh, user friendliness is, is is great. Um, definitely is. Um, so this next one, which we've already been talking about, it's uh, the Nautil, your personal Bitcoin assistant. I uh, had on Keto Miner and uh, Asky We Too. Um, had both of them on to uh, to chat about the Noddl. Um, we talked about Bitcoin full nodes, Lightning Network nodes, BTC Pay Server, um, which basically a self sovereign Bitcoin uh, payments. Um, also, kind of an invoice system, kind of like what uh, what Square does. Um, Electrum Personal Server and Electrum X are a couple other uh, tools that are on uh, that come stock on the Noddl device. Uh, the current status: it's a great piece of hardware in active development. Um, I kind of regret not waiting. Like, I guess it was just, it's just timing. If I would have waited like three or four months, I could have gotten the, the really nice, um, like, uh, not that this one's not nice, but they, they came out with, uh, I guess, a, um, a dojo version of it for Samurai, um, where, where it does, uh, the Samurai coin join stuff. Um, yeah, I would have, I would have, uh, I would like that one. It's, it, it looks a little cooler, but other than that, it's, it's, it's fine. Um, totally fine. But, um, yeah, they're they're coming out with new products. Uh, yeah, new products, uh, or I guess new new uh, additions to it every day. So that's great. Uh, user friendliness, um, as I kind of alluded to earlier, considering how complex some of these things are, the Noddle is surprisingly user friendly. Um, overall critique, uh, I highly recommend. Um, as Max Hillebrand said when I uh, in, in my first interview with him, I think uh, we've got to be better at securing capital than state is at confiscating it. Uh, and the Noddle is a great tool for that. Um, but uh, Jason, you got anything? Nope. All right, we'll keep moving. Uh, mesh networking and off-grid Bitcoin with Richard Myers. Uh, so we already talked about mesh networking, but uh, yeah, in this episode we talked about, yes, mesh networking again. Uh, Lightning, uh, we talked about the Lightning Network um, and how um, his uh, Global Mesh Labs is trying to incentivize, uh, I guess they're, they're trying to do some interesting incentive, incentive, I guess, uh, incentives um, using Lightning Network and mesh networking. Um, then also he uh, he's working on Bytebit AB, a decentralized period of your Bitcoin exchange. Um, so current status, uh, Global Mesh Labs is doing incredible work. You know things like TX10 and Gotenna. There's a lot of incredible work happening um, on mesh networks and uh, working and uh, even you know combining it with things like Lightning uh, and the Blockstream satellite to make to make Bitcoin off grid ready and capable, uh, which is an awesome thought. Awesome thought, right? Because you know barring Barring a worldwide catastrophe where there's little access to electricity, um, as long as there's ways for miners to secure the network, which you know innovative entrepreneurs will always figure out ways, to, you know, figure out figure out uh, you know complex solutions to complex problems. But um, yeah, I mean they're they're making Bitcoin off grid ready, which is uh, which is awesome. Um, user friendliness, <laughs> same as the buffer mesh networking, uh, lightning, uh, lightning. Um, I guess trying to understand. Um, lightning from a from a high level is a little complicated, but like I said, actually setting up a payment channel and doing these things um, really isn't too bad. Um, really surprisingly, is not too bad. Uh, my overall conclusion, again, is necessary. What do you got, Jason? <laughs> it's absolutely necessary. Um, if if in any time that you can do these sort of crypto anarchy things outside the realm of a government controlled system then it's a good thing because well government sucks so mm -hmm. do, you using using bitcoin off grid and and having the tools available to use it without having to go like through the actual internet it's fantastic right yeah and then uh you know things like open dimes they're these uh these little uh they kind of look like US usb flash drives but the idea is you load up those car those mm -hmm. things with you know five, ten, fifteen, twenty dollars worth of Bitcoin, and um, you don't even need the network. You just you just you just trade it off like cash. Um, and I don't know I don't I don't know exactly how. I mean, there's obviously ways to verify that um, that there's money on it. Clearly, um, why the hell would people use them if if people if people are just ripping each other off all the time? They wouldn't. So yes, there's the, there's the, the, no. the, there's there's precautions in place and to 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 to, to get 
for that to work. I don't know exactly what they are, but 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 they work. Um, pretty popular on crypto Twitter. But um, <laughs> anyway, um, next one here. Uh, the war is lost, but Bitcoin fixes this. This is with uh, uh, Demelza Hayes, actually. Um, so the a little bit of a different episode. Um, kind of <laughs> talked about how uh, uh, you know education will not save the world. Education alone. Um, how the communists have basically won, and uh, but thankfully Bitcoin and uh, I guess just I don't know individual solutions in general are, are solutions to to the uh, somewhat of a solution to uh, to the problem of communism. Um, <laughs> so uh, the current status, um, current status and user friendliness, and can't really apply those those uh, apply those here. Um, overall, uh, overall. Um, yeah, conclusion. As I just said, ed education alone is not going to free the world. In that case, the communist nope. powers of this have won, but Bitcoin and other tools that allow us to opt out and increase our personal freedom surely exist and are worth utilizing. So, um, next one here, uh, the fog of crypto war with Smuggler. Um, and, I mean, that's this wasn't really a, a direct action-oriented episode, I guess, per, per se, but um, it was more so educating and uh, a smuggler, I guess, uh, you know, enlightening us on a very complex subject. Uh, but anyway, the strategies and tools that would be relevant in this case are encryption, um, just, yeah, encryption, we're talking about cryptography, and then also code chain, um, since uh, one of the most prevalence, or I guess one of the most um, uh, probably pervasive problems um, that that will exist going on going into the future is, is targeted updates. Um, so code chain is uh, one solution to, uh, I guess, one avenue of targeted updates. So that's a good thing. Uh, current status, the crypto war is ongoing, um, and it will be forever. Yeah. Um, user friendliness, it's uh, complex. Uh, you know, this, this entire realm is complex. Um, encryption, um, you know, refer back to our comments from earlier. Um, but yeah, you know, this stuff is complex, but it's very easy not to make those bad arguments that I made in the past. Um, that Smuggler admitted to, to making in the past. Um, so, you know, listen to the episode and, uh, you know, um, learn the error of your ways and move forward. <laughs> as, uh, yeah, as, as, as we've all, as we've, we've all done before. So anything on, uh, the Fog of Crypto War with Smuggler? Nope. Okay. Just a good episode. Go to it. Indeed. Uh, so just a couple more here. Uh, living on Bitcoin, Max Hillebrand's unbanking journey. Uh, so this was yeah, a live stream that's uh, going to go out on the on the uh, podcast feed the next day or two. Um, yeah, strategies and tools. Uh, well, Bitcoin, uh, Bit Refill, um, or I guess say yeah, Bitcoin uh, to gift cards. Um, and here in the states, I don't know. Um, there's also e gift, uh, e gift, and uh, uh, yeah, e gifter and gift. G Y F T um, are the two similar services here in the states. I use gift now because. Uh, I guess it would have been like a year ago. eGifter um, uses BitPay, and BitPay wants KYC and shit. So um, I don't recommend um, eGifter anymore. Just uh, GYFT gift. Um, we also talked about Wasabi because that's uh, you know the wallet that he that he works on uh, quite a bit, and uh, I guess a wallet that uh, that he obviously uses. So um, current status: uh, becoming unbanked is difficult, but possible. And uh, Bitcoin being a global money, it seems to make sense for a mobile. Uh, you know, a worldwide mobile Vanuin. I think it makes a whole, a whole hell of a lot of sense, um, especially talking to, uh, to to Max about it and, and all of the advantages that he sees. Uh, user friendliness, uh, Bitcoin user friendliness is surely improving. Jason just test you know had testified to that um, a couple times for this episode. Um, I haven't personally used Bit, Bit Refill, but as I said, I've used Gift and eGifter. Uh, super easy to use. You can't fuck it up. Um, Wasabi coin joining for privacy. Um, yeah, also pretty low on the complex scale, um, uh, complicated scale as well. So um, overall critique uh, for privacy and personal freedom, becoming unbanked and living on Bitcoin uh, seem like great ideas. Um, so yeah, what do you got? Uh, living on Bitcoin, purse.io, that's one of the other mm -hmm. programs that I, I recently learned to use. Uh, it allows you to buy on Amazon using cryptocurrency. Uh, you go on the website and you, you do the little search and you find what you want and you throw it into the cart and you go to pay for it. And then your Bitcoin goes into a holding, and then someone else orders the stuff for you mm -hmm. and sends it to whatever address you designate. And then when you receive it, you confirm that you receive it, and then they get the Bitcoin. Mm -hmm. the, the cool part is is that, like, you get a discount for using it. So, like, it, like I saved, like, 5% by using it because the person values the Bitcoin more than they do the, the Federal Reserve notes. So you right. can you can save up to like I think it's like up to fifty percent, but I mean you have to like spend a lot of money to get fifty percent. Somebody's gonna put that much out. 
Right. But yeah, that's that's an, another tool that you can use to live off Bitcoin because Amazon has everything, literally everything. So, right. And and another thing he mentioned, um, Matt, that Max mentioned was that Amazon gift cards are always needed. So, um, mm-hmm. I mean, yeah, there, there's always a premium on on Amazon gift cards for people that are unbanked or for 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 um, for a lot of Bitcoiners. So. Yeah, I think it's uh, it's a great strategy. Um, it's something I was working towards myself, but I think as I as I explicated in the episode, um, I I was going to I was kind of going toward going in that direction. Um, yeah, back in 2015, I started when I'd get my my paychecks, I'd cash the entire thing. I wouldn't leave anything in the bank, or I'd leave just enough in for the one or two bills that I had to pay pay that month that were you know automatically mm-hmm. withdrawn. Um, but I was I was working towards becoming unbanked until basically last year when I didn't have like a, a mailing address. I didn't have a home. Um, <laughs> I didn't have a home, so I was I, I was kind of concerned about like because I need I need bank accounts for like Elliott Publications. I need bank accounts like especially if I was going to be in Acapulco. Um, like I like a, I was so I, I kind of started moving in the opposite direction just to make just to make sure I'd have access to um, the first realm banking system. Um, so I, I guess it was it was good to talk to Max about that because I, I kind of uh, got realigned and um, <laughs> no I've got I, I'm thinking about it more. So um, I think there's going to be some 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 action. Um, to, to 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 mitigate um, my uh, my falling back into <laughs> into the first realm, so um, yeah. Anything any any anything else? Yeah, uh, not having a bank account is hard. I don't use a bank account because, as we've talked about, I I work under the table. I get paid, I get I cash my check and then do everything I need to do from there. And if I do need something online, like I have proxies that I will go through to pay for it, or I'll use. Um, a prepaid debit card, mm-hmm. but so it's it's entirely possible to live without a bank. It's right. just it's difficult at times. That's all. Right. Yeah. I mean, you'll ju- you'll just you'll you'll run into to minor inconveniences. Um. So so yeah. I mean, it's it's that it's that same convenience and you know security privacy, uh, sort of trade off mm-hmm. that's you know we we talk about oh so often in this podcast. Um. All right. Uh, yep. Last the last episode. Um, the most recent one that was just recorded, I guess, like a, a week ago, um, that will also be on the podcast feed the next few days. Uh, building the Cyberpunk Future with Frank Braun, uh, strategies and tools, uh, script cache, uh, and code chain. Um, so, yeah, go listen to the episode if you want more information on those things. I'm not even gonna try to explain it. Um, but yeah, current status: <laughs> code chain is basically functional. Um, yeah, code chain is basically functional. Script cache is uh, in development. So. Um, User friendliness, not sure at this point. Um, I hope it's I hope it's easy to use, just like any other, just like Bitcoin. That'd be that'd be awesome. But uh, yeah, we'll have to see. We'll have to see. You can't can't critique something that doesn't exist yet. Um, over so yeah, overall conclusion: anything Frank or Smuggler working on, um, it's worth following. So um, yeah, it's worth following. Um, they do a lot of important work. So what do you got? Um. Yeah, ditto what you said. <laughs> I have no idea what either of those things are. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> I'm just going to check real quick the thoughts. Had, oh, that's not good. Let me see. Just want to make sure I'll have enough storage for this video. This free space, refresh. Yeah, it should be all right. All right, because we're yeah we're we're on conclusions now anyway. But uh, yeah, conclu- so yeah. Um, yeah. All right, conclusions about strategy. Um, number one, uh, and I'll just kind of run through my conclusions, and I'll turn it over to you, and you can you can uh, let me know what you think. Um, so number one, uh, with most subjects <laughs> I explore, I find that uh, a better understanding typically helps with my confidence and ability to act on you know the inf- the said information in question. Well, the more I learn about the complexities and inner workings of internet and computer privacy. The less confident I've become, um, but there are positives. Uh, positives, uh, as Smoker discussed, there are some solutions in the works. Uh, for example, code chain, possible fixes to targeted updates, uh, etc. Um, another positive, cryptography works. Uh, things like PGP and Signal. Um, as, as we talked about earlier, the issues arise with operating systems and the hardware, um, but there are solutions in that realm as well. Um, what I will say, though, um, is I still have learned, um, even though. Um, yeah, I guess I'm less confident in some ways. I'm more confident in others because I've learned an immense amount. Um, setting up the noddle and all the Bitcoin stuff, uh, command line work in Linux, which I'd never done before, um, writing the white paper for Darklands, um, which was extremely complex and it's something definitely out of my wheelhouse, but um, I did it. Um, so yeah, I mean, I, I, I've, I've still learned an immense amount. 
Um, so yeah, well, this shit is, is really, really difficult. I don't want that to be the reason you give up on privacy, per se. Um, rather, I want this further realization to just encourage you to go further and to learn more, um, kind of um, like what's what's happening with me. So um, number two, uh, Linux Tails is an incredible operating system and geared towards privacy, so much so that I, I put this out on, on Fascist Book and, and Twatter and Float and all those places. Um, but uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm making this recommendation now. Every Vanuwen should have a Linux Tails bootable USB flash drive in their everyday carry bags and bug out bags. Um, why the hell not? Um, it'll cost you, well, I don't know what it'll cost you yet, but it might be available on the LUA store, but it's not going to cost you much. And you might as well just toss it in there. Um, so yeah, number three, uh, for those of us who aren't coders and developers, um, it's nearly impossible for us to personally audit projects. Uh, so obviously as individuals, we need to learn as much as we can and have a decent understanding of the underlying technology so we can somewhat tell if someone's lying to us we, so we have some sort of a bullshit meter um, but it's, it's also worthwhile to have have <laughs> folks like Frank and Smuggler and Bruce Schneinier um, etc that you can go to for professional expertise because um, for, real, for really complex things I mean so, like for a lot of the stuff is super complex and there's just no way the average is, average person is going to understand some of it um, so you know unfortunately there kind of just have to be a, like a kind of a, a little bit of a leaning towards appeal to authority but obviously self self educate as much as you can so you don't have to um, and then uh, I guess uh, num uh, number four here with many simple points. Um, crypto anarchy is a natural strategy for Vanuin to adopt. Um, even Rayo discussed encrypted ham radio nets and uh, wrote, quote, payment would most likely be in credits transmitted through the net to an underground bank. Um, so, yeah, that sounds a lot like Bitcoin or Bitcoin, uh, generally speaking, or even kind mm -hmm. of the Lightning Network, um, as Richard Myers and I discussed in that episode, um, I guess, a couple of few months ago. Um, since crypto anarchy is uh, focused on uh, the removal or obfuscation of attribution, uh, it's much like Vanu in that regard, um, in that it's a strategy that isn't trying to change the world, uh, but rather a way to be free in the here and now. Um, so recall back to when I, when I talked about the definition of crypto anarchy, um, it's not about trying to change the world, it's just trying to, uh, you know, op uh, it's trying to cut off the inability to, to inflict punishment because there's obfuscation of, of identity. Um, obviously, the use of pseudonyms. Tom Marshall, he's a pseudonym, it was Rayo. Um, focus on mobility between Vanu and also Crypto Anarchy, I would say, um, for sure. And uh, for this last section, I'll turn it over to Jason. Um, just something I thought of um, as I was preparing for this, but uh, it's, it's called similar, it's sections called similar concepts. 